Hello everybody, this is Mike Fauché, and today I want to cover a cool new product from Acasis. The TBU405 Plus is a small portable Thunderbolt slash USB docking station with a built-in NVMe drive. Two USB 3.1 10 gig ports, one USB-C port, and dual display 1.4 ports, as well as built-in active cooling at a really aggressive price point. To find out more on this and to see how it performs, stick around for the rest of this video. And please don't forget to like and subscribe if you find this useful as it does help support the channel. Full disclosure, before we go into the hardware, Acasis did reach out and send me this device for testing, but they didn't pay or influence this video in any way. The testing and opinions are my own, and they'll be seeing this video for the first time just as you're seeing it. I did want to thank the team at Acasis for providing the hardware and making this review possible. I've been using Acasis products for a long time, and I've done several reviews on their devices on my channel. When I first saw this product, it captured my attention as I was looking for a portable docking station for my laptop that had built-in storage so I wouldn't have to carry separate devices. Let's go through the hardware and then put this thing through its paces. In the box, you get the Thunderbolt cable and, of course, the device itself. If we look at the front of the device, we get to see two Display 1.4 ports. We'll talk more about these ports later in the video and see how they behave in both Windows and Mac OS systems. Directly on the other side is a single USB 10 gig port. Looking at the end of the unit, we'll see that there is a 40 gig Thunderbolt slash USB 4 host port, which connects directly to your host computer, as well as an optional 5 volt input in the event that you need more power than the 10 to 15 watts that can be supplied by the host. At the other end of the device are the two USB A 3.1 10 gig ports. Looking at the bottom of the device, we can see the active cooling fan that keeps your internal NVMe drive pretty cool. We'll talk more on this active cooling later in the video when we get into testing. Opening up the unit, we can see where to mount the NVMe drive. This is a toolless design and the drive is just clipped in place with a rubber insert. They do thoughtfully include an extra rubber clip in the box should you lose it. Once you pop your drive in and snap the cover back into place, you're basically ready to go and we're ready to see how this thing tests and performs. I used my MacBook M2 Max with my Windows Razor laptop, my Dell laptop, and my M1 M2 MacBook Airs to do all the testing. Starting with the NVMe drive, I attached the enclosure to my Mac Studio and ran the benchmarks using Blackmagic Disk Benchmark. As you can see, it's performing very well and it's reaching the published numbers from Acasis. Next was to benchmark a Windows system, so I used my Razer laptop and plugged the device into the Thunderbolt port. The device was recognized instantly, however in Windows, you do have to change the drive policy behavior in order to generate the fastest performance, otherwise your drive will perform around 500 to 600 megabytes of write speed. To verify this, go to the device manager and under the disk drives, right click on the drive that you'll be using in the enclosure and select properties. On the Policy tab, select Better Performance and Enable Write Caching. These two settings should allow you to improve your write performance by a factor of about 3 to 6 times and allow you to get full speed out of the drive. One warning is that to make sure that you properly eject the drive when you're done with it and not just pull out of your system as you could potentially lose some data if the drive isn't ejected properly. Once the settings are changed, you can see that the Windows machine is also getting great performance. I overlaid the tests I ran from the Mac OS on a similar benchmark so that you can see that both are very capable and both meet or exceed the manufacturer's claims. To complete the testing, let's verify that both USB devices and the DisplayPort adapters also function as advertised. I attached the docking station to my Dell laptop and was easily able to run the two additional monitors. As you can see here, there wasn't an issue running two monitors on my Windows laptop. As for the M1, M2 MacBook Airs, they only support one external monitor and that also worked perfectly well. Plugging in two peripherals also worked perfectly. I was able to attach SD card readers, flash drives, most low power devices without any issues. One of the several unique features about this device is the active cooling which is arguably an area that you'll either love or hate. On the positive side, it does a great job at keeping things cool. And during my testing, the outer case barely got warm, measuring around 100, 
degrees Fahrenheit, 38 degrees Celsius. Under normal use, the downside was the noise. As you can see from my sound measurements, you'll have to be okay from the sound of the small fan whirling in the background, That is, and it is not thermally controlled and stays on at the same speed all the time. As I truly love this device, it left me wondering how much cooling this fan actually provides. As the design of the enclosure is all metal, and it's pretty good ventilation all around. To verify this, I decided to test the device without the benefits of the fan. But before I show you what I did and the results that I got, I want to be perfectly clear that I'm not recommending that you do this, and that this is not the recommended way to run this product. I did this strictly for testing purposes out of my own curiosity, and if you try this, do it at your own risk. To set the stage, I stressed the device with the fan running after about almost an hour of copying files and benchmarking. I reached a case temperature of about 101 degrees Fahrenheit or 38.3 degrees Celsius around most of the case. Disabling the fan on this device is pretty trivial. If you open the lid, you can see there's two, contact, two, two probes that actually make contact that supplies the power to the fan, which is built into the lid. To kill the power to the fan, I applied a small piece of polyamide tape to the contact terminals, which effectively isolates the pins and the contacts and cuts power to the fan. I'll leave a link to the polyamide tape that I used in the description below should you want to risk it and try it yourself. As you can see from the noise measurement, the fan is now completely disabled after the application of the tape. I didn't have to take the device apart or damage anything in the process. Next, I ran the same test on the device, and as you can see, the temperature only increased to 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius, which demonstrated to me that the fan does indeed do a good job cooling. However, due to the construction of the device providing good heat sinking and ventilation, this would only be really effective under really extreme conditions, and in my opinion, this device would stay pretty cool with or without the fans for normal uses. This device remained cooler without the fan than I saw with the hyperdrive or the Zyke drive by approximately 10 to 15 degrees, and neither of those devices have all the additional features. Again, try this at your own risk if the fan noise bothers you, but for me, I'm leaving the fan off because in the environment I'm in, the noise was an issue for me. All in all, I couldn't find any major flaws in the performance and functionality of this product. If you're like me and you love silence, you may have to perform my mod. However, if it doesn't bother you, then you certainly won't be disappointed with the performance. I really like this device and it fits in a price range that's only slightly higher than just a single NVMe SSD enclosure, yet it has the additional features of a docking station which allows you to attach additional peripherals as well as multiple monitors. As an SSD enclosure, the performance is extremely good and on par with dedicated enclosures and has the added benefit of additional ports and functionality. Even during my testing with the fan off, this device ran very cool, and it was perfect for my daily needs when I'm away from home and at my work location. If I could change one thing about this device, it would be to add a small slider switch on the inside of the device to allow me to set different fan profiles, such as quiet, normal, and performance, or even possibly disabling it altogether. Even as it stands, the device is awesome, and it definitely will be part of my mobile setup. Again, I want to thank the team at Acasis for sending me this device and allowing me to test it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video. 